you have a prayer request that you would like to share, or maybe you have a question about the Bible, here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another Saturday edition of Prayer and Answers. I hope that you are having a great day. Uh, I'm your host, Randy Smith, and with me is uh, your co-host, Dr. Steve Kovacs. Steve, good afternoon. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you today, Randy? I'm doing awesome. Good. It's good to have you here uh, in the studios with me. Uh, we're, for the next hour or so, going to be uh, perf- hopefully hopefully taking telephone calls with prayer requests maybe some uh, some questions on scriptures will be going together as the body of christ uh, taking um, our needs and presenting them to the father in prayer with the anticipation as always that god answers our prayers also we love uh, opening the scriptures we particularly uh, like it when people call in and and uh, join in on the conversation, whether discussing um, the scriptures we're going over or bringing their own question up. The phone number here is seven seven nine zero zero one six, and the show is not worth much when folks don't call in. <laughs> and so, it is seven seven nine zero zero one six. Plus, Steve gets really grumpy when people don't call in, right, Steve? <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. That's not accurate. Okay. I guess I get grumpy when folks don't call in. And so. It's discouraging, (laughs) but I don't get grumpy about it. Okay. So if you don't want me to get grumpy or Steve to get (laughs) discouraged, would you do us a favor? Call your friends here in the studio. We are your friends. We're your brothers in Christ. Help us out. 779-0016. I have a couple of prayer requests right now that we want to begin with. Um, Irene and and her family, they lost their, uh, Irene uh, lost her husband, if I'm reading this right, to COVID. And so um, uh, we want to pray for this family. Um, Irene's husband passed away uh, from COVID. So could I impose upon you, Steve, would you lift this family to the Lord in prayer, please? Yes. Lord, we, 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 um, we're grateful that you uh, hear our prayers. Um, but it breaks our heart when people uh, lose family members, particularly uh, when um, it's unexpected or um, and it causes great emotional strain in families. And so we want to pray for Irene and her family. And we want to pray that you would bless the, uh, the children. We pray that you would want to... Bo- we pray that you would bless Irene and give her your touch of grace. Um, help her and comfort her with the comfort that only you can give. And Lord, we pray that the comfort that we can give, that you give to us to give to others, that uh, she has that uh, family of God to extend your comfort through uh, people. And Lord, we um, we're burdened because of so many uh, difficult situations and tragedies and and illnesses that have arisen because of COVID. Um, they happen because people get sick. They happen because people lose their jobs. They happen because people uh, lose connections with others and they get um, they feel uh, depressed and um, uh, feel a sense of hopelessness and. And Lord, finally, there are people who are gripped with fear. And all these people, Lord, in addition to Irene and her family, we pray that you would extend your grace and mercy, that you would lift them up by your spirit and help us as the body of Christ to minister to those as we know that people have needs and to go out of our way to serve them and to show them our our love, uh, which comes from you. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Also, um, now, if you're driving right now, and if it's at all possible, I wanted to ask you to pull over somewhere. If you don't have an appointment you have to be to, uh, if you just pull over somewhere, and maybe you could join us in praying. Um, There is nothing in the kingdom of God that is more effective or more important uh, than than praying. And I think uh, it's an opportunity also. It's such a, a, a radical thing to pull the car over and say, hang on a minute, I, I'm going to give the next hour um, to the Lord. 
and uh, it's a beautiful uh, offering that you can give. And the other thing is, if you're pulled over like that and you're joining us in prayer, the Lord may prompt you and you'll be able to dial without putting everybody on the highway in danger and you can participate uh, here in the show. Um, We have another prayer request that came in uh, for David and Esther. And it just simply says that David and Esther uh, need to follow God. I do not know uh, who sent the prayer request in, someone who knows them. Maybe David and Esther sent it in. Maybe you know somebody in, in like fashion that you just, you just see their lives and you just go, they just need God. Uh, and so uh, uh, we're going to take a moment and pray for David and Esther. I'm going to ask you if you would bow your heads and pray with me. Join together uh, as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you presenting uh, the lives, the, the little universes of David and Esther. Father, they seem to be living their lives without you. I want to pray, Lord, that you would change that at whatever cost, Father, that you would intervene, that you would break into their lives, Uh, just as you did with Abraham when you called him out of uh, out of Ur. Lord, would you would you just intrude into the lives of David and Esther through your word, maybe through one of your children, maybe through a radio show? so that they could meet you and turn their lives to you and begin walking the rest of their days in your fellowship and company with you as Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Another thing I'd like to do, too, uh, before we go any further, um, and if you all will forgive us, this is not a political show, but we live in a political environment. So there are a couple of things that I'd like to address. One of them is... Our dear sister in the Lord, Irene Armendariz, ran with all of her might for a congressional seat. She went to meeting after meeting in the churches. She particularly focused on campaigning in the churches, and she has a staff that worked incredibly hard. Um, And and, uh, for whatever reason, the Lord decided that Irene would not win that election. Uh, There were pastors who... um, were involved in legal lawsuits for allowing her to come into their churches and speak. There were many people who worked on her staff. It was an amazing thing that they did as a group. They worked so hard. And as they did that, they brought to the forefront some some topics that needed to be brought up, particularly in the pro-life arena. Irene believes that we need a constitutional amendment um, outlawing uh, the taking of the preborns, and so, um, uh, and she was she was running um, in a very uh, um, difficult and unfriendly environment, and she did an amazing job. and And so, I I would like to take some time, and if you would join with me in praying for Irene and for her whole staff, that God will richly reward them. Uh, for all that uh, they have done and that uh, their their run will not be over, that they'll be able to continue to serve God in bringing to the forefront this message, these messages of a peop- of, of us as a nation turning back to God and to stop taking the lives of the unborn. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to, to, uh, to bow your heads and pray with me. Uh, Father, we do not always understand all of your ways. We do understand that we are in a war and that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. We know, Lord, that there are, that here on earth there are authorities, there are, there are ruling authorities, but in the heavens also. And we, we recognize, Father, that there is a great conflict. Well, Father, uh, Irene and her staff fought hard, got involved in that conflict. And, uh, and took a lot of heavy blows, and they poured their hearts and their time into it. And I, I just want to ask you to bless them in every way. I pray, Lord, that you'd touch their hearts. Let them, let them feel your comfort, know uh, how pleased you are with their efforts. Because in the final analysis, they had stated over and over they were doing it for you. I know uh, a couple of sisters, Martha and Dolores, I don't know many others, but I know that they work so hard. Uh, for months 
uh, registering people and and just they they worked their hearts out. I pray that you would reward them. I thank you, Father, for the testimony that they all gave, that they stood up and spoke your word. And uh, Father, I pray that you would take the words that they spoke and that those words would bear fruit and that we would be able to see a great uh, crop of righteousness spring from it. For we know, Lord, that your word never returns back void. And we also know, Lord, that any effort that we do for the kingdom uh, does bear fruit. And so, Lord, we also pray that you would be glorified. Perhaps somebody would receive Christ because of the things that Irene or her staff said or did. And that uh, when, when they all get to heaven, they will be able to see, meet people who are there because of them. In Jesus' name, amen. And then just one more while we're in this portion of, <laughs> of uh, the program. We have an election for mayor. Uh, a runoff election coming off. We're up. We are right now in um, in the early election stages, and the runoff is between uh, our current mayor, D. Margo, and uh, um, a former mayor, Oscar Leeser. And uh, um, I, I want to pray for our mayor. Uh, he's he's going. He's leading us in a very difficult time. Uh, during this outbreak of COVID and all of the deaths and all of the things that are going on, it's got to be tough to make the decisions that he has to make. And DeMargo is a believer in Christ. Um, and I just want to pray for him as he's doing this and as he's uh, entering into this runoff election uh, that the Lord would bless him. Steve, would you mind praying for DeMargo for sure. us? Sure. Um, Lord, um, politics is a calling. And um, you call your servants on occasion to, to be politicians and those who can lead in, in that way. And it is a difficult calling. And I, I, I know that uh, Mayor DeMargo knows you, that he walks with you, um, and that he loves you. And um, we just pray, Lord, that you would bless him during this time because he has received a lot of opposition from people um, that have has not been um, uh, well deserved. Um, he's received a lot of blows spiritually as well as uh, physically, and I know it's taken an emotional toll on him and his family. So we pray, Lord, a special blessing on, on Mayor Margo. May you sustain him during this time. May you grant him favor and, and wisdom as he lives these days. And we pray that your will uh, will be done in his life yes. and in the life of the city. And I can tell you that our city um, needs um, the kind of leadership that he represents. And uh, we just pray that you would um, um, be gracious to us and guide us in, in the way of, uh, of, re of walking with you and guide our city in the way that, that uh, freedom can ring and liberty to serve you and to love you um, and allow people uh, the opportunity to work and um, also um, to give wisdom for protection for people um, as they need it, Lord. And so it, it's a difficult calling, and we pray your blessing on, uh, on him and his family, and uh, we pray that you would uh, sustain our, 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 the city of El Paso and um, allow it to move forward in a way um, that more people can hear the gospel and can be guided to your kingdom. Um, and we thank you for what you're going to do in the election, and we pray that your will will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you have uh, someone in your life <coughs> that is struggling right now with COVID or you know of uh, maybe one of your neighbors, and particularly if somebody who lives on your street, you know that they've lost someone because of this disease. Whether someone on your street, they're, they're struggling with the disease, I want to invite you to call in and, and just uh, tell us their names, and we'll pray with you for them. Uh, also, during this time, I want to encourage you uh, to be involved with the people who live on your streets. Um, uh, you should know who, who on your street uh, is struggling with things, and so uh, 
want to want to ask you to have that on your mind and just start you start praying lord show me uh, who i'm supposed to be uh, ministering to or who i'm supposed to be praying for um, but if you would call in with names of those that uh, uh, that are struggling right now with COVID or perhaps family who have lost a loved one we would uh, love to pray over them and our phone number is seven seven nine zero zero one six and what we're going to do is we're going to take a break to give you a opportunity to to pick up your phone and dial seven seven nine zero zero one six and uh and and we we ask you to uh to join us because steve and i don't want this to be a show with just our voices so give us a call seven seven nine zero zero one six we'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and answers rootless trees this is ken ham co-author of the book against racism called one race one blood Forty years ago, when Mount St. Helens erupted, geologists watched a catastrophe rapidly reshape the environment. For example, a forest that grew on the side of the volcano was broken off at the roots and washed into a nearby lake. And within just a few years, the rootless trees had sunk upright to the bottom of the lake. They were then partly buried in layers of sediment. Now this is significant because we find fossils of trees without roots, buried standing up almost as if they grew there. It's thought this was a slow and gradual process. But Mount St. Helens showed us this can happen fast. Those other trees were buried by a much bigger catastrophe, Noah's Flood. Discover more about Noah's Flood and our full-size ark when you visit us at AnswersRadio.com. Be encouraged and equipped to defend your faith at AnswersRadio.com. Every day, we go about our lives driven by routine. Our vision clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, invisible. It's time to open our eyes. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who combat human trafficking, whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here, 779-0016. We'd like you to join in the conversation. Uh, we've already kind of had our political section there of our program. Let us now, Steve, go to the news. What is going on uh, in the in the court cases and, uh, and, and as far as uh, uh, religious liberties and so forth? Well, there's been very good news for a change. And um, the Supreme Court... Um, has ruled in the last week and on a, on, on a New York law that restricts people from going to church in, in a more restrictive manner than uh, other businesses and, and even essential businesses, as the court said, um, that, that uh, not meeting in person, by definition, is irreparable harm wow. to the church. Um, because they have a, a First Amendment right uh, to meet, and meeting in person is not the same as meeting online. Isn't and, that great? And and so that is absolutely the case. And so they said because there is irreparable harm, um, they're granting an injunction against these 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 restrictions. So there was a number of ten people in a certain zone in New York that you could not have more than 10 in a mm -hmm. particular church if you're in a particular zone or 25 in other zones that are uh, have less of a uh, amount of the disease. And they said those are unconstitutional restrictions because wow. you are allowing other businesses without those uh, restrictions, um, including um, liquor stores, uh, casinos, and um, other things. Um, there, there is a tremendous statement. Um, if you can give me a second here, sure. and I can find it. It's, it should be, I should be able to get to it fairly quickly because it's the last sentence of the concurring opinion by someone I am been highly critical of, Justice Gorsuch. Uh huh. Um, um, and, and so um, uh, 
the the idea of of, of those concepts, um, and and so basically what it said. Um, You've got it there in your stack uh, of stuff. I got it in my stack of stuff, and I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> okay. So it says, this is the last sentence. It is time, it is past time to make plain that while the pandemic poses many grave challenges, there is no world in which the Constitution tolerates color-coded executive edicts that reopen liquor stores and bike shops but shutter churches, synagogues, yeah. and mosques. Praise God. And so um, there's been a new case that Cal in California, and the Supreme Court said, we don't want to rule on that. Well, you've already seen our opinion, and we want you, California, to rule in accordance Good. with it and, and to quit, to stop the restrictions of the California governor on the basis of the arbitrary numbers. Yeah, I know before that ruling, uh, the California governor this week was talking about, uh, about really um, shutting down all... Uh, all um, uh, religious services once again in these color-coded areas yeah. and uh, and he's even saying you can't even go outside right yeah so uh for those of you who are going well now wait a minute you know with with the pandemic shouldn't we i just like to remind you of where we came from <laughs> there was this great call a couple hundred years ago that went like this give give me liberty or give me death I don't know what happened to us where we're saying you can put me in jail as long as you keep me alive. But um, it didn't used to be that way. Of course, I understand that that's an alternative concept. I'm one of those guys that I'm kind of don't put me in jail. I want to be free even if that costs me my life. I'd rather I'd rather die free than live in chains. Well, we have risks, and everybody lives with risks, and you balance risks, and sure. nobody's telling people they have to go out. If you want to, yeah. if you want to stay in, and you're vulnerable, um, yeah, that is perfectly acceptable. But don't impose it uh, on other people when uh, other businesses that that uh, are arbitrarily called essential, like liquor stores, right, um, and casinos, right. Yeah, that the um, casino thing and, was really and bike shops are open yeah. and 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 so that's a that's a as the supreme court said that's an automatic violation of the first amendment that's awesome thank yeah. you lord for that um and uh I'm, I'm i'm glad after after we've had so many uh what things going the way i wish they wouldn't it's nice to have one go the right way and in fact it's just nice to have common sense kind of have a role to play in our environment right now. Uh, we did get a phone call with a um, a prayer request, and Steve, this is from one of our listeners in Oklahoma. Uh, and if I'm reading this right, it's Donnie uh, is in the hospital with COVID. Donnie. And so, uh, Steve, would you mind lifting Donnie up in prayer, please? Sure. Um, Lord, we have many uh, uh, faithful listeners and um, We've, we've heard from them from Oklahoma before. Um, we want to pray and, uh, for Donnie. And we pray, Lord, that your healing hand would be upon his life. We want to pray, Lord, that you would help him to overcome this disease. Um, help him um, and guide him back to, to, to full health, Lord. Help him to experience your grace and mercy while he's in the hospital. Help him to experience your love and mercy, and we pray that um, we know that, that many times people are not even allowed to visit, but that your grace and your spirit will, will, will have a special visitation in his life, and that you would renew him in his, in his walk with you and guide him uh, towards your kingdom purposes and, and, uh, and encourage his family and uh, give them strength as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, I kind, I kind of, I'm kind of one of those, uh, the glass is half full guys. You know, I try to look at the bright side. Of, That's funny. You uh, just said you were grumpy. <laughs> every, well, I get grumpy <laughs> as I do it. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, is the glass half full? Is the glass half empty? Or did somebody give me a glass that's too large? You know, it's kind of. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I'm going to show you something here in just a moment. My uh, brother Mike in uh, Chicago sent a little cartoon here looking at the bright side of things. 
it's a cartoon of a of a ventriloquist okay and uh, it says uh, the ventriloquist is wearing a mask and the little dummy on his lap is wearing a mask and it's saying well at least ventriloquism got easier <laughs> so <laughs> anybody can become a ventriloquist now uh, if you get to wear the mask so, so looking on the bright side of things that's awesome let's go to our phone lines good afternoon Wes welcome to prayer and answers Hey, is this Brother Wendy, Randy? This is Pastor, yeah, right, Brother Randy, yes, and Steve is right here with me. Oh, tell him I said hello. <laughs> you just did. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I just had a, a special prayer request for uh, a friend of mine that's going all the way back to high school. Uh, he and his girlfriend, you know, they belong to the Catholic faith. And uh, they were going to get married. Neither one of them could, were able to have children. And just recently, back in uh, October, uh, she had some problems on the, on the inside. And he came to her apartment uh, along with her cousin. They found her deceased. Mm. And the thing of it is, is that if that wasn't hard enough, then he winds up getting COVID-19. Hmm. We had to deal with that. And here is the bad thing of all. Now he's all over that. And they've, you know, laid her to rest and stuff. Um, and they were supposed to get married on December the 16th. So he's hurting quite a bit. Yeah. Then you... I was just wondering if maybe we could say some kind of prayer for him. And yeah, we maybe said we would. And uh, did you say spirit. did you say he is um, of the Catholic persuasion? Yes. Yeah, he was raised as a Catholic. Yes. Do you think that he has he ever accepted Christ as his savior? Well, he says he has. Okay. I mean, he he attends Catholic Church on a regular basis. Okay. And um, have you have you had an opportunity to talk with him and just what kind of things have you said to him? Well, I've tried off and on through the years, through the past 30 years, you know, but uh, I don't know. It's become a, you know, a traditional thing. Yeah. No, Mom, I mean, dad, grandma, and all that, you yeah. know. No, I mean, with, with the things that he's going through, what kind of things have you, have you been able to talk to him to just well, kind of encourage him? Just telling him that I'm, I'm here for him, I pray for him, and, Good. and I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, you know, for him not to worry that I'm, she's in good hands with the Lord, you okay. know? Yeah. And well, I think he's just, you know, he's just at, kind of like at a loss right now because of everything that happened, one, two, three. Yeah. And are you, can you tell me what his, his first name is? It's Willie. Willie. Okay. So what we'll do then, Wes, is we will pray for him right now together. And then, okay. and then you'll be able to tell him that you called in to the radio show and and the, the, the pastors on the radio prayed for him plus the people who were listening all bowed their heads and they they took his his heartaches to the Lord as well okay okay all right let's pray father um, we we bring Willie before you the Lord uh, you know whether or not he has a saving relationship with you let me just start there Father, if he does not, I pray you'll use all of these events to bring him uh, closer to you. That if he hasn't met you, that he can. And if he has met you, that he'll find that you are his stronghold and his source. Lord, I guess what I'm asking is that you'll use all of these events for his good, uh, for his benefit. Father, I pray that you comfort him. Your word tells us you are the God of all comfort. Lord, I pray that uh, he would know that you love him, that you would you would just bring that to his mind. Father, I pray that you'll bless Wes, give him the ability to continue to minister to Willie, to 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 love Willie, and to help him carry uh, these these hard times. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, brother. Well, thank you very much, Wes, for giving us a call. Is there anything else we can do for you before we let you go? Well, let me say a small one for my son. Mm -hmm. Get him to come to church with me this Sunday. Oh, Hopefully. Good. What's your son's name? <clears throat> Joe. Joe. So your son usually doesn't go to church? 
Well, he used to, and you know, he's off and on again. Yeah. I when when he was little, when he was just born, I brought him home from the hospital. I I raised him to the heavens and I offered him to God. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so I'm hoping that he'll uh, he'll attend with me. You know, I can get him more on the tending part than sure. just every now and then. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, let's have let's see if uh, if uh, Pastor Steve will pray for your son Joe then. All right. Okay. All right. Hang on. Lord, um, in the Bible we read when where uh, Samuel was offered uh, to you, uh, if, and uh, we know that he re used you used him very mightily, and we, we we pray for pray for Wes, and we pray for Joe, and we pray that you would um, open his heart to your grace. We pray that you would guide him uh, in a way that makes him uh, want to come to church and uh, want to serve you. Um, we pray that he will love you, Lord, um, because you loved him first. And, and we thank you, Lord, that uh, you will reach out and touch his heart in whatever state he is, whether he knows you or not, um, to reach him at his need and help him to respond and grow in relationship to you. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. amen. Thank you, Steve. Amen. All right, amen. God bless you, Wes. And, uh, All right, well, God bless you, brother. All right, thanks for calling in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we're going to take another break here. I'd like to give uh, some other folks a chance to call in with your prayer request. Maybe you've got a scripture you'd like to share with us. Maybe you've got a question. We're at that section of the show where it is wide open. We want to talk about whatever you want to talk about. So the phone number here is 779-0016. I'm going to ask you to pick up, uh, pick up your telephone and take on your responsibilities here <laughs> as a participant and contribute in Jesus' name. We'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and answers. Weekend Magazine, KELP. Saying goodbye to 2020 will be easy for most of us. Good riddance, right? While that may be true, at KELP, we see it a bit differently. You see, with hard times, we believe, comes the opportunity to share the good news, introducing people to Jesus, the one who is never surprised by what's around us and has the answers on how to deal with it. Jesus says that in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. If you'd like to help us share that good news, your tax-deductible gift right now would mean so much. Call 915-779-0016 with your one-time or monthly gift that keeps this great Christian programming on the air. 915-779-0016. Reaching families, changing lives. Together, we're El Paso's Christian station, KELP. In many countries around the world, medical care is scarce. Countless millions have no access to safe surgery. Mercy Ships is there to help. Mercy Ships provides free surgeries for the thousands of those who are waiting for surgery at each port. Mercy Ships is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. Find out how you can help by visiting our website at mercyships.org. That's mercyships.org. We all have the ability to touch the lives of those around us. To someone going through a difficult time, a text, a call, or a visit can mean so much. Reach out to the veterans in your life today. Let them know they're not alone. One simple act can make all the difference. That's the power of one. If you're a veteran in crisis or no one who is, visit VeteransCrisisLine.net for free 24-7 confidential support. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here is 779-0016. We invite you to call and participate in the conversation. Uh, that first half hour, 35 minutes went by fast, didn't it, Steve? Yeah, it was nice to have some... I'm Some not calls. Yeah, I'm not grumpy. You're not discouraged. So there you go. <laughs> it's all going <laughs> well. <laughs> right. Um, At least we're not dopey. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and uh, I really uh, uh, appreciate 
uh, so much when when folks uh, um, call in because mm, one of the things that we're trying to turn the corner on fight against is the thought of a consumerism Christianity um, the scriptures it says that everybody brings something um, uh, in the Old Testament also it speaks about nobody approaches the temple empty-handed everybody brings something and uh, even your prayer request um, uh, minister to folks because they don't feel like they're alone they can they can hear that there are real people out there with real problems and and how we address those problems is in prayer and so appreciate the calls and want to encourage others to call in let's go to our phone lines uh, good afternoon Richard welcome to prayer and answers well good afternoon pastor say my question is kind of simple uh, is a born-again Christian can he uh, be cremated ah it's a great question um, let me start with this. I don't want to spend all ten thousand dollars on my funeral. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me start with this. Let me just start by saying uh, the scriptures are pretty much silent on it, and then let's talk about why folks have different points of view, and then we'll kind of answer the question. Are you in a hurry? Have you got a minute? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me listen to you on the radio, okay? That'd be another fun. question uh -huh. is uh, another. My other question is. When Jesus said, when two or more get together, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say, I will meet you at the first cafeteria at a certain time, I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm bringing Jesus down from heaven to earth among uh, my uh, crowd here, you know, my two or three people. Yeah. Well, and the pastor, I, the pastor I go uh, to church with, he says, no, Jesus is sending his spirit. Okay. And I just know I think Jesus is coming down All right, personally. Stay on the phone then, and we'll talk through that one too. So the easy answer on the cremation. Okay, I'll get on the. I'll, I'll listen to you on the radio. Okay? All right, Richard. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. The answer on the cremation. Some say no because the pagans used to uh, to um, cremate, and uh, since the pagans cremate, it wouldn't be fitting. Others say you can't cremate because. Um, we want to take that uh, tabernacle, that temple that has been the house of this image of God and, uh, and, and treat it with a dignity and bury it. And others say we can't cremate because in the last days when Jesus blows the trumpet and the body is raised from the dead, if we've cremated it, how, uh, how can he raise uh, from the dead? So, Steve, there are the three... Uh, opposing, generally opposing views to cremation, uh, how would you deal with those? Well, I, I would say um, that, that with, with all due respect, you're missing the point. Okay. <laughs> and, and, the, and the point that you're missing is that we don't take our body uh, mm. with us. Right. Um, and so even in 1 Corinthians 15, um, we, we get a we get a spiritual body yes and uh it's a physical body that dies it perishes but we we are raised a spiritual body and the apostle paul calls that that body a building yes that we live in a tent but that he's going to give us a building right so what do we do with a tent we put it away <laughs> and um and, and we don't need it anymore right so there is no need from a scriptural perspective um, to say that we should have to be buried um, right. with our physical uh, dead body. There's nothing in scriptures that says what we have to do. It if, does. If, if you want to, that's fine. Yeah. There's nothing that says you can't right. either. It's, it's, but, it, but please don't say that somehow God is going to be lacking in, in raising you right. from the dead. Um, and, if, and there, if you, there if you are those also, cremated. Steve, that say, well, you know, Jesus was laid in a tomb. Uh, yes. And that the Jewish people uh, uh, always, you know, they laid people in tomb. And that's true. That is how yes. how they handled um, uh, burial. But they also didn't eat pork. And, uh, you know, so that's part of it. I Another thing, when people say, well, if, if they if if I scatter my ashes or whatever, you know, how you know, how is God going to raise that from the dead? <laughs> Here's a story that I heard. So this fella um, uh, died and he was buried. And uh, after he was buried there, uh, somebody drove by and they spit out an apple seed at the cemetery. 
and an apple tree grew and the roots from the apple tree worked its way down into the coffin and began to feed off of the molecules of that person who had died and you know 60 years later uh, uh, another fellow came by and he ate an apple off of the apple tree that had some of the molecules from the first fellow and he was a sailor who was lost at sea and he got eaten by a fish <laughs> And then a guy had, uh, caught the fish, and he ate the fish. So it, it, whether, you, whether you, you, you scatter the ashes or your molecules are buried in the ground, either way, God's go, God and only God is going to be able to give you a resurrection body. Uh, nobody's going to be able to track down all of the individual pieces. And, and, and you could just look at Ezekiel where God takes all these scattered bones yes. and brings life to, yes. to the bones, and he can give life to anything. Right, right. Now to the question about uh, Richard, the other question Richard had about where two or three are gathered, Jesus said, there I am also. And, he's, and, and the pastor <laughs> told him it's the Spirit of God. Let's just talk about that for a moment. Um, first of all, uh, we want to put this in context. And what I mean is this. Are you saying that if there aren't two people there that Jesus isn't there? Um, the, Spirit, the Spirit of God is everywhere. Um, he's not saying, if you get two people together, you've brought me down from heaven. Um, if, you, if I'm alone in my prayer closet, is God there with me? Uh, do I have to have two people in the prayer closet? Um, the Bible says that, that I am the temple of God and that his spirit resides in me always. And, uh, and so this issue of where two or more are gathered was an issue on church discipline. It was, it was if the church has to discipline and, and you've, you've got uh, two of the members together and to deal with the church discipline issue, you have all the confidence in the world um, that, that, that as you deal with this issue, and he's talking to those apostles, as you deal with these church um, discipline issues, I'm right there with you. In other words, as you're doing it in the name of Jesus, that Jesus is, is right there involved with it. Uh, as far as what the pastor was saying, uh, Jesus ascended into heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father, and, and then he did send his Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God is the one who is here in, in dwelling us. He's the one who's here uh, con continuing the ministry of Christ. However, the Spirit of God is God, and Jesus is God. And, uh, and so y it's really hard to sort them out that if you've got one, you've got all. And, uh, yes. uh, but the Spirit is, is the personhood of the Trinity that is interacting with us today. Yeah, and, and so we don't want to go too far, but if you look at the, the concept of being in Christ mm -hmm. and Christ is being in us, yes. it's not a physical being. It's, right. the, it's, the, it's the enabling and power of the Holy Spirit, um, and, and uh we are united with Christ. Right. And in fact, one of the, it's the very spirit of Christ. So when you, when That's you talk right. about the Holy Spirit is in me, Christ is in me yeah. because you cannot, you cannot separate the Godhead. Uh, Jesus is able to say, Philip, when you've seen me, you've seen the father. Does that mean that there isn't a father? No, it's just that the three are so united and yet distinct. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and so I'm, I'm very happy Randy pointed out context because yes. context is the key to understanding many yes. struggles that sometimes sure. we isolate verses and ideas, but we, if we read it in context, it becomes very clear. In that particular verse, Jesus, very was, clear. he was saying, the authority I'm giving you is my authority where two of you are gathered together dealing with church discipline. You have my authority as if I were, as if I were right there. So... So that's what that's all about. But thank you so much for the question, because so many do have a question on that particular verse, and hopefully that'll clear it up. Let's move on to our phone lines. Alfred, go ahead and turn down your radio, brother. Okay. Uh, there we go. I just, to call, I just had to call and comment uh -huh. on, that on that question that man asked about cremation. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if you all remember this or not, but... Uh, the first Christians, a lot of them, thousands, it could have been thousands, were burned at the stake sure, by, ne right. by, by Nero. Yes. They were, they were, their bodies were pulverized into powder. Yeah. In fact, uh, Paul says, if I offer my bodies to the flames, but have not love. And so, yes, you're absolutely right. Many were cremated against their will, weren't they? 
Uh, yeah, they were the, the first Christians. A lot of them were, the, I mean, I believe, you know, the first Christians. And, I, I you know... Um, and let me just name I, one. Uh, let me name one to you that was such a beautiful thing. Polycarp. What was the, I think, if I remember, I was the pastor of Ephesus after, after uh, finally the last apostle, John, died. And Polycarp, uh, and I'm, I'm not, it was either Polycarp was in Ephesus. Oh, I can't remember. I think it was. Anyway, um, the martyrdom of Polycarp, and when they burned him at the stake, it said that uh, they, they piled the wood there and they lit the flames, and the flames wouldn't touch his flesh. But when they finally did, and there was an entire coliseum watching him being burned, at the stake, when the flesh finally did uh, touch his uh, touch his skin, and he was singing and praising God the whole time, and it says there was the aroma like sweet baking bread that rose up around the Colosseum. His his martyrdom was something beautiful, but yes, he was definitely cremated. Exactly. So the way I see it is that you know when one is truly born again, I believe what you receive, it, that soul receives a seal of God. Yes. So, I mean, every soul has that seal, and it's like, you know, I always say, God doesn't need a man-made computer. Uh, that soul, once once it's born again, has that seal of God already. Yes. And, you know, as far as that body issue goes, um, I think C.S. Lewis put it beautifully. He said, when he was talking about, it, you know, are they the exact same molecules, he said, actually, it's very much like a waterfall. The shape of the waterfall is there, although the, it's the water is moving through it. The water is not the waterfall. It's it's that that shape, and the same thing with us. That that you and I. It doesn't matter about the molecules. You and I are 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 what we are in Christ, sealed in Christ, and God's able to provide us with this miraculous new body, right? Precisely, yes. You know, and that's I guess when you receive that new body, a yeah. new glorified body, right. as Christ did, as Christ did. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for your call, Alfred. I really appreciate it. Now, have you been listening for some time? Oh, yes. Oh, I've been listening probably since 1998. Oh, I'm into prayer and answers, brother. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, that's all right. I just you, <laughs> I thought you were referring you'd, to, you'd not, you'd to, not, your, to, to the Christian station. Yeah. Sorry about no, that. No, no. You've not called in before to this program, and so now I've got your name. I'll be calling out to you once in a while when it's low and say, come on, Alfred, call in, okay? Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, please forgive me because I have a problem with, uh, uh, and it's not a, uh, a psychological anxiety. Uh, I have problems with a, a chest Mm. Uh, uh, I have chest pressure, so I went to see the doctors, and yeah. and they can't find what's wrong with me. Yeah, I understand. Well, would you mind if I prayed with you right now? Oh, I, of course not. All right, I'm going to ask, uh, if you're listening at home, would you just join me? Just bow your heads right now and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you on behalf of Alfred, and Alfred's right here. Lord, I pray that you would uh, that you would heal this, whatever it is. And Lord, that would, as you heal it, I pray, Father, it'll give Alfred such a testimony he'll be able to share, and you'll be glorified. Lord, I, I pray that through this, someone will come to know you as their personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you, Alfred. Have a great afternoon. You going to church tomorrow, brother? Uh, I'm, I need to find me a church, but... Uh, uh... I, I, yeah, I'm not a... Uh, what side of town do you live on? In the Lower Valley. You live down in the Lower Valley? Yeah, um, I live right here close to Carolina, Carolina and North Loop. Okay. You know, I've been I've been looking at a church there here. It's called uh, TDR, um, uh, Divine Restoration, Temple of Divine Restoration. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it, it's a new church. I, you know, I just barely uh, found it like a, around two, three weeks ago, but... I've been trying to, I've been logging into the Facebook to see what it's all about. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's have a good heard, place to start. Have you heard start. of that church, sir? I have not, uh, but you do, you know, you do want to check and, and see what they're all about. And if they're, if they're a prosperity, uh, you know, if that's their primary thing, you want to kind of avoid that, okay? Um, yeah, yeah, I know about the prosperity yeah. churches. And yeah. So, so there's so much of that going on today that you want to uh, avoid that. Um, but looking on the websites and seeing what they're about is really important. Um, there is one church that I know about. It's not on the lower valley, but it is on the east side. 
it, it wouldn't be too far away from from you you could look up on their website it's called Vista Hills Church Vista Hills I've heard good things about that church is that on Lee Trevino yes it is Okay, that's where they built that uh, that clinic. That's where they're building. They're still in the middle of building a pro-life building, totally on faith and prayer, doing it kind of the way George Mueller did. All right? right and, it, and it's on Lee Trevino. On Lee Trevino. If I remember right, their worship service starts at 1045, okay? Okay, well, I 1045. appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, brother. God bless you. God bless you also. All right, bye-bye. Merry Christmas. You too. Bye. And Johnny, welcome to Prayer and Answer. Yes, good afternoon, Pastor and Doctor. Uh, seeing that time is short, I'll, I'll be quick so that All other right. people can come in. Okay, John. Okay, uh, you know, I have a calendar, a Christian calendar that has uh, the Christian thought for the day. Uh-huh. And today's, uh, today, it's, it's 340 days uh, of, that have passed since uh, the 1st of January. Okay. I'd like to read it. All right. And, and then I have a question. All right. Okay, here goes the thought. When you genuinely desire the knowledge of His will and are committed to following it once you know it, God will inspire you with a new level of joy and assurance in prayer. I think, I think that was beautiful. It is, and very true. And mm-hmm. let, us, let us remember from scriptures, Jesus, when, he, when they came to Him and they said, Hey, that thing that you're doing, that thing you're doing all light night, night long, that thing where you go and, and you get alone with the Father, that that praying, teach us to pray. Yes. He told them, well, when you start, recognize and acknowledge our Father. That's it. That's, that's but then right. the very next thing is, all that matters, Father, is your will is done. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that if we have that as the priority, it's right. There is joy that cannot yes. be taken, right? It is. Amen. And so, uh, John, uh, in, enjoy that joy of the Lord, yeah. and, and continue. If you ask him, Lord, teach me, yeah. you know, give me wisdom, teach me your will, and then you're praying, okay? Yes. Because you get, we accomplish so much of moving the Lord's will forward, the kingdom forward through prayer, uh-huh. right? That's it. All right. That, that's real good. Uh, uh, do I have time for the question, or I could Yeah, no, you've got time. Okay. Go ahead. All right. It's just a general question, not, not very deep. Uh, we've had a lot, many, several uh, deep uh, questions and answers uh today it, it's on the book of isaiah mm-hmm. uh let me it would be correct uh when i say there are 66 books in the bible yes that's okay. how we clarify them yes yes and then there are 66 chapters in isaiah and there are some that yeah. uh and they're broken the book of isaiah is actually broken down into two sections uh-huh. that really correspond closely to the old covenant and the new so yeah. many yes that's absolutely right uh-huh. that's it uh uh-huh. well that's that's a. Uh, I was listening to a program this morning uh, at KLP, and and they mentioned that. Uh, and I guess it would it would be uh, correct to say that the Isaiah is a mini Bible. You might call. It. And you know what, Steve? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Steve Kovac spent a lot of time looking at that and stuff. Yeah. Steve, uh, what what do you say about that? Yeah, we just finished our quarterly Bible study in the Book mm-hmm. of Isaiah. Okay, oh, that's nice. And 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 so the, the idea of Isaiah does have many, if not. Uh, vast majority of the themes that you can also find uh, in the New New Testament, mm-hmm. and it and it gives you all the the different time frames. So it gives you the time frame of when Isaiah was was there, um, somewhere around uh, 630. It gives you the time frame of when um, uh, he was speaking of the exile and the return from exile. Is giving you the time frame of when Jesus is coming, and so there's some servant. The servant is a Messiah, uh, and there's all these different time frames. And then he goes to the to the second coming, and the new heaven and the new earth, and all of those things are interspersed, particularly in the last 26 chapters. Um, and um, but they're not in a consecutive or chronological way, but they and, and they give you a lot of great biblical themes. And that is something that's so fascinating about the Book of Isaiah. How if you were to outline the book. Uh, even even the fact that there's 66 chapters, when you outline the book, the last 26 chapters, which is how many books are in the New Testament, that that brings in the next theme. And so it is a fascinating, yes. um, uh, there, it parallels the, the yes. larger Bible. Now, yes. to try to take it farther than that, you can start stretching things. Like I if see. you say chapter one is Genesis, uh-huh. okay. well, there's a lot of correlations there. You can have some fun with that. 
but you might have to stretch things a little bit, okay? Yes, yeah. okay. Uh, just one real quick. Uh, you mentioned Vista Hills. Uh, does Vista Hills uh, have a, a Facebook ser a service for uh, that I can no. log on? Oh, oh, I no, see. they do. I know that they're... I know that their um, sermons go up on uh, their okay. website uh -huh. um, after the church service. They don't have a live, okay. they do not they, have a live feed. They um, they do have live services, though. Oh, uh, in-person walk-ins. Uh, yes, they have, they have live walk-in services. I've heard, um, uh, I've heard that uh, um, good things about the church. Yes. I've heard that the pastor is a very gentle, yes. a good. nice, nice person. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll and, and I know yeah. that the services start at 1045, okay? okay? Uh, one of these Sundays, uh, I'm going to go visit Vista Hill. Oh, we'd love to have thank you. you. Okay, uh, thank although, you. Although, John, yeah. we're not promoting any particular oh, no, church, no, no, okay? No. But I just had, if the, if you're in that area, it's yes. a good church, okay? All right, great. Uh, All I'll right. talk to you next Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Well, and uh, that just about wraps up this edition of Prayer and Answers. I want to share... Um, Kenny's writing right now, the pastor there at Vista Hills has a good sense of humor. <laughs> and so, folks, if you don't know, I am the pastor of Vista Hills Church, okay? So that's why Kenny was in there laughing and Steve was laughing. Um, but yeah, that is the, the church that I have the privilege of pastoring for the last 16 years. And, uh, and we're a small church and, and, um, and just trying to follow the scriptures as we read it. Um, something that I saw, you know, we have a family um, uh, gift exchange each year so that we don't have to buy for every member of the family. <laughs> we just buy for one. It saves a ton of money. And the agony of trying to find the perfect gift. And, uh, and, and we use an application, and you can put on your wish list, you know, the things that you want. So I was on that application uh, putting down, you know, what I was, my, my wish list, the things I want. Uh, for Christmas. And as I was looking, there was a t-shirt on there. Since John had mentioned that we've had 340 days since the beginning of this year, there was a t-shirt on there, Kenny. It, it, it was a black t-shirt with white letters. And all it said, the white letters, big white letters said 2020. And below it, it had the five stars and it had a one star rating <laughs> for the year 2020. <laughs> And I kind of see how you could feel that way, you know. If you I'm were, not even sure I would give it one star. <laughs> if you were rating the year. However, for, for the kingdom of God, it's been a good year. Yes. Because people have gotten saved. That's right. Uh, because of the trials. And so I want to give him thanks for giving us a, a difficult year because it's helped us to get things real. And I'm praying that there will be a revival in the church because of it. All things work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. We hear in Romans. And so thank you for joining us. Thank you for all of the callers. And we'll see you next week, the Lord willing, with more prayer and answers. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is the way.